Let's see if we man pull some moves. Nice, Bowser. I like it. I'm going to copy Bowser. You know, you got to do the booth moves. We're, we're limited to space in our careers. So we, you know, that's you right. got to play with right. foreground back. I can't believe your boy wrote this. I remember when you debuted this. Did you, I, on the show. Joe? Yeah. It's amazing. He's so talented. This is I'm incredible. <laughs> Look it's at, so wing groovy. Wingman's got the best moves. I'll do the wingman. This is the wingman. This is it. Let's go, Mug Mug. How cute is he? Yes, he, is, he is the, the OG. Oh, we're doing a little dance move for him. The wingman. Do the wingman. The wingman. The wingman. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do one ear up, one ear down, though. That's like the wingman. It's so cute. Is the theme song Aww, done? Because we could dance all day. No, 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 that's good. That's good. That's good. You know why? Because we are so lucky today. I can't even believe he said yes. Eric Bowser. I wish we had applause noise. We have applause noise. Golf clap, everyone. Golf clap. Are you we, kidding me? How could I say I, no? Um, I, uh, we, we had a, uh, we, well, no, we had a chance to do something for Warner Brothers uh, Media at the upfronts, and that was just the that was a so taste. Fun. That was just the taste so of the ship it show for me. So I had to say yes. Yeah, <laughs> you graduated. Um, before we get started, I just want to call something before we get into all this that. Eric Balza came in kind of newly off the boat from Toronto, Canada to be on the Fairly Odd Parents as my anti fairy poof. He was foof. And I very rarely say this, but I said, You're going to be a big star. Did I not? You did say that. And for you yeah. to say something like that, I mean, you don't have to say anything like that to anyone. And the fact that you, both of you, uh, on several uh, separate occasions at the very beginning of my career had always been so nice to me and have always been so receptive to me being in the room. And it's it's such a small room. And to hear something like that from someone of your stature, both of you, it's just, uh, it means a lot. And it's it was fuel for me, you know, because when you're starting, not just in voiceover, and you're both of you guys are certified actor on screen, the real deal actor. Certified, absolutely you know, certified. Yes, and it's like hearing something like that from someone in your in your league and your level is just such a a confidence booster and 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 just reassurance that you're there, and not only are you there, but you belong there, and and again. That just goes not only that you way. belong there, but you're going to kill the game. And I, I very <laughs> rarely say that to people because I know how hard it is to break in. I know how hard it, hard it is to sustain a career. And I knew you were a special, you know, and to maintain longevity, longevity in this business, you have to be a special. And you are, you are, you're insanely talented. Um, so before we get to Space Jam, I'd love for you to tell everybody your origin story. And because um, you, you have a really interesting origin story. Of course, I love that you're a fellow Canuck. Um, but maybe tell the world how you got your start and how you got to today where, holy crap, you just had a huge premiere for Space Jam. So let's go back and, and dig into Baby Bowser for a minute. Uh, well, like Wingman, I come from Planet G. We both arrived here on our mothership. Uh, there he is. Hi, Wingman! And you know what? Every time I see Wingman, hold on, I always have to offer him a glass of water. I'm always making sure that Wingman is fully hydrated. There we go. Don't there you go, Wingman the G. <coughs> Thanks, Uncle Wait, Bowser. It. There it is. I think you have to do the voice of that. <laughs> Don't you have to do the voice of that while you offer that cup? Yeah, I like water. <laughs> We're stealing Scooby. I called Sam Register. He's cool of uh, offering the voice of Scooby to Wingman. Or he nice. could be more like a like a scrappy do. Uh, pa -pa 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 puppy power. Hey there, That's hey there, cute. Uncle Scoob. You, I mean, uh, you're you're so brilliant at impressions. Not all of us do impressions. Certainly, Greg can't do any. How many impressions what? can? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, How many can you Greg? do? By the way, this is this is gonna be me holding the two of these squares back. You know, hey guys, you got keep keep the peace. You know, you guys have your. Uh, he knows I love uh, him. He knows look, I love him. Look, look, they call me the master of impressions. Just give me anything. Do you want me to do impress something? I'll impress it. Wow, I'm into it. I didn't, we'll we'll, we'll I do mean, a challenge. Hmm. We'll do a challenge. Yeah, yeah, let's um, do a challenge. Idea. An impression hmm? to go from okay, the origin we're, story. We're though, that again, sure. it's. It's 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 coming from Canada, where you're from, Tara. Exactly, Toronto, our city. And you know, we're not the only ones to come from there. We got Cree, 
We got uh, Maurice. Uh, and on the West Coast, we have people like David Kay and Trevor Duvall. You know, we, we there's there's talent on uh, all sides of Canada. But um, I don't know what it was if it were... <laughs> If it were like the long winters that keep us humble uh, <laughs> and bored out of our minds, and that also want to make us come here where it never snows. Um, but yeah, it, it's just one of those weird things that we could have stayed back home. And obviously now more than ever, there's so much Canadian production going on. But I think what drove me was this dream of, you know, voicing these characters, specifically the Looney Tunes. You know, I would have these shirts even if I weren't voicing the characters, that's how mm. much. Oh yeah, I love, let's, let's share that. You know, do we have that shot on the Instagram of of Bowser as a baby at a theme park <laughs> with like a a guy and a uh, you know? There you go. Look at that. That's amazing. So there's the that. uh, that, that Sylvester the cat. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was in 1992. Uh, I was just here on like one of my very first visits to California, and that is Six Flags. Magic Mountain, and then, you know, 2021, that is me at Six Flags Magic Mountain for a very special uh, rap party for Space Jam. LeBron thought, hey, let's just uh, rent out a, a giant portion of Six Flags Magic Mountain, Six Flags After Dark, wow. and they just threw a party. And uh, I remembered that no. photo of me with Sylvester, yeah, and I was laughing so hard. Uh, thanks, for yeah, invite, you know, it's, that's... thanks for the invite, Thanks for the invite. <laughs> I'm gonna say I, mean, I, could, I couldn't. There, 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 I really was... couldn't make it anyway. I couldn't make it anyway. But thanks yeah. for the invite, <laughs> Greg. I did, love now, it. Did you Greg know you like... always? Did you know that you always wanted to do animation voiceover specifically? You're also a visual artist. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, like it started out with with being you know not behind the microphone but behind a pencil and paper and just you know, doodling and drawing uh, for fun. And it was studying Looney Tunes and Saturday morning cartoons uh, that got me into animation in general. I didn't know, like, being an animator or character layout artist that they they will pay you to read uh, into a microphone. Uh, <laughs> I didn't go about it the way both of you, I assume, and you both studied theatrical and dramatic arts, stage and screen. Uh, I did not, and and you know that uh, <laughs> from spending hours in the booth with me, standing backwards in front of a microphone, not knowing how it worked. Uh, yeah, Fairly Odd Parents, and I also met Greg on uh, Ben Ten Omniverse, and I know you were a part of that too, Tara. You were a you were a young mm -hmm. uh, Ben on that one, and yeah. and have always been Ben in all of the Ben Ten uh, you know incarnations. And yeah, I mean, like that was that was so challenging to be in a room with. Tara Strong, Greg Sipes, and then John DiMaggio, who's just mm. like, ah, well, look at this, look at this asshole over here, you know, <laughs> look at this, look at this mm -hmm. jokester, you know, it, it, you're in a room with people like Rob Paulson and Jeff Bennett, who are just dueling, doing dueling Don Knotts impressions, and you're going, why, why am I here? Uh, and then they ask you to step up to the mic, and you gotta, I gotta credit people like Matt Youngberg and Derek Wyatt. Uh, who were really, you know, in so much support of me. And they just trust, they just go here. They throw you into the deep end. And then you have someone like Sue Blue uh, voice directing you, who has been in it for how many decades, you know? Like 200 years, I think. 200. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love, I miss her golf stories. Uh, but um, I know, you know what a sweetheart. Uh, she, she has she has seen it all herself and has directed almost everyone and then a newcomer comes along and it's it really is at that point they don't have time for people to like okay it's gonna take me five sessions to get into it they expect results you know like there's no time and everyone was so kind and i will never forget that and and that's that'll stay with me forever you know, oh, in general, awesome. the voiceover community is very kind. They're, the, they're like the nicest people in the world, and you don't get the same catty stuff you get from on camera because it doesn't matter what you look like. Although I think we're all kind of cute, so let's just put that out there. Speaking of cute, um, speaking of cute, mm -hmm. who do you ship in the world, Bowser? I want to know, like, if, if Eric Bowser could ship any ship in the whole universe, unlimited to any universe. Any fandom? Oh, who who would you oh, who would you ship? Are you, you should really make him ship Mary Kill if you're gonna do that. 
<laughs> okay, let's get to it. Ship, marry, kill. Let's get right to it. Ship, marry, kill. Well, any, I mean, any, no limits. We could talk about uh, we could talk about the things that we've all been on. So I'm gonna say, uh, you know, feel unlimited. Ship, a truly. It, it, to, to keep it in relation to the three of us, I mean, we've we've been on. Uh, I know Tara and I have been on Unikitty, so uh, you're going to ship two people. It's going to be Brock and Master Frown, and then Mary. Uh, <laughs> I mean, geez, Louise, mm. uh, Hoof and Foop, but but Kill. We're going to have to say Tiger Claw and Michelangelo, because I mean, uh, you know, uh, their rivalry. Are you going to kill? They, they had you're going to kill Michelangelo. So it's just, I wow. mean, if I'm Tiger Claw, you know, like, like oh, man. that is my job. Uh, as, as Tiger Claw, people came here not to hear me. They came here to hear characters like Tiger Claw. We, they, we had a really awesome, yeah, we had a really awesome improv at Comic-Con where it was Michelangelo and Tiger Claw at a Starbucks. <laughs> it wasn't it like that. It was like, oh my uh, God. Yeah, Michelangelo was a barista, and Tiger Claw was ordering a uh, double chai latte. Uh, you know, one of those, please, and a blueberry scone, not warmed, cold. I'll uh, take a yeah, vegan I Spanish mean, latte, please. Yeah, there it is. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, shipping it, man. What What do you guys think? I mean, what What is What is well, your well? Well, we ship? also it's we better. also want to know like who Eric Bowser. As Eric Bowser ship Mary kills. Yeah, like, let's go deeper. If you could man. have let's go deeper. relationships with any character in pop culture. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. who any would you ship? Who would you marry? Who would you kill? Any character in pop culture ship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a big. This is a big ship. This is a big this, love boat right here. This is a big one. It's this so is a, big. This it's is so a good big. One. Oh man. So uh yeah, uh Jessica Rabbit for sure. Uh, I mean, nice, if you're talking nice. about an introduction to animation uh you know, uh I mean, sexuality yes. personified. She was yeah. she would That's love right. you Eric Baz. I can see Jessica That's Rabbit right. just melting all over you. So that makes a lot of but sense. But that whole thing was like did she frame her husband Roger? Like that was the whole thing in that no. movie. It was like, you know, uh, she, did, she knocked him out with a frying pan in, at one point. So it's like, wow. I can't believe that, it. That, I don't believe that, it. That struck a chord with me. I'm like, ooh, she's she's into the frying pans. I kind of like that. Mary. Yeah, Who'd exactly. Marry? Yeah. Uh, and I would marry Miss Potts from Beauty and the Beast because, you know, Angela oh, Lansbury. Uh, big, she, it seems she's like you've thought that one out Mary. before, though. No. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Murder, she wrote. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. And then kill, uh, oh man, uh, <laughs> I don't think I could ever, <laughs> I don't think I could ever muster the, the courage or the- Come on, the, Bal, the, don't hold back, dude. I don't this have your the chance. grit. Kill somebody, dude, Who, kill somebody. This, this is the one that will be on Twitter tomorrow and uh, it's over. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. You I'm know, Bowser wants to kill say, Tweety Bird or something. Yeah, I'm going to say my career so I could spend more time with my son because, you know, I love my son. Oh. And, uh, the only thing that keeps me from spending time with my son is when I have to clock in and clock out at work. Uh, and I do uh. appreciate the work, but I think about my son and I'm like, you know what? I got to spend more time with the kiddo. I was on another panel with E.G. Daly and she was she said that in her career, she would always bring her kids around to all the sessions because she was like, I don't want to sacrifice time with my, so did my I. kids her and i did yeah, too. right we, i we worked and, up until we delivered that's the beauty of voiceover you know and that's um, like EG went into labor at a rugrats session and yes, then we'd bring them that. and we'd bring a we'd bring a babysitter we'd bring them to studios the kids would run around nickelodeon cartoon network salami wherever we were and then we'd take breaks we'd go and nurse them there was like one time when eg was like nursing um her baby during a powerpuff girl session and it ruined everyone's lines like you just hear <laughs> Like, you know, the entire time, <laughs> but it is a wonderful career to still have plenty of time with your kids. And that's beautiful. And my gosh, he's just like a mini, it's like somebody shrunk, shrink grade you. And then you have your son. He's, he's a tiny version of me. And, uh, yeah, he's a uh, tiny I, I, version I, of you. I, that's I why me and wingman are never apart. I know. Like you bring wing, wingman into sessions. I'm trying to find a picture of my boy and, and, and I don't know oh. if I have one, like the current one, but, oh my uh, God. The but nectar yeah, of the universe. Wingman, wingman. Children and animals. Ugh. They, they All the are greatest the, qualities uh, in the universe. 
they they here he is this is him this is my this is my little kid <laughs> he, i mean oh, he's so cute he's like oh, a little he's wingman so delicious he, yeah. and he loves Bowser. you know what he does okay and, and this is this is every kid now they don't just watch tv they they skip through ads on youtube they they like comment and subscribe and i'll tell you his go-to is watching teen titans go on youtube yeah waffles, 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 all waffles, day it's waffles 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 and he loves Aww. raven and he loves cyborg but he loves waffles waffles waffles, waffles i swear to god waffles 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 hey speaking and, uh, of waffles Yes. Have you ever cos? What What have you cosplayed as? I think over the years at Comic Cons, you've cosplayed. I, I can remember. I just can't remember which what you cosplayed as. Me, me, not at Comic Con, but definitely during Halloween. Uh, if it's any one of my characters, I've done uh, Rise of the TMNT's Master Splinter, probably the, cool. the, <laughs> the the least popular Splinter because he went against the grain. You know, he he was like out of shape, a couch potato, didn't care about his kids. But that's how, you know, people forget Rise of the Team NT, uh, you know. It's good uh, to shake the tree, Bowser. It's good to shake yeah. the tree, man. I think you your, know, your, 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 uh, your version of Splinter is going to always stand out, and that's a blessing. That's true, and I appreciate you saying that. I mean, this coming off of, like, one of the most successful runs of TMNT, the 2012 Ciro Neely uh, TMNT. I know. But, yeah, the Andy I... Siriano TMNT was, like, they reset every character. And and I think why I think that one stood out was uh, is because at the end of the series, he redeemed himself as being a good dad. Uh, but mm. I've, I've cosplayed as him. I've cosplayed as Tiger Claw. But always during Halloween. You both have done cosplays at comic-con as your characters what would you say is the mm -hmm. most super fun i mean for it's, me I've harley seen, for sure yeah that outfit was insane yeah. that was a custom made outfit yeah uh-huh i order all my stuff custom made and you know we've had so much fun interviewing cosplayers on the show and it's extraordinary when people make their own stuff and like have 3d printers and make light up weapons i mean uh, it's such an amazing world to celebrate and explore. I'm really grateful that we've been doing this show, especially during COVID, to connect with fans when you normally are going to cons. But it was really fun cosplaying as as myself and seeing fan reactions. A lot of time, people not knowing it's me as opposed to if I was just in my regular clothes, they would. Really, really fun. Um, you know, Bowsy, I, I want to know about your impressions because that does set you apart from other voice actors and like how um long have you been you working on bugs and i i know we'll give you a chance to ruin your life in a minute but i want to hear like how much time i mean you you knew that you could do this and what an amazing like you're an amazing manifester look what you made happen you're everybody how, okay tell everybody who you are on space jam in this movie right now uh, well, first of all, Mama, you know, like when I talk to the ladies, you know, I gotta study the great Greg Sipes, Mama. Like, what's, what's going on? I mean, like, there's, like, look, here's the thing, okay? There's, there's like this boy. He's like right up here. But like, if you want to talk to like, you know, the ladies, you gotta dim it down a bit. And, you know, that's my, my Greg Sipes, you know. That's but uh, the first time I, I got met those Greg, two down. Here's the thing. I know. Uh, and then the seagull. I won. Does it join the impression? <laughs> I won the impression contest. The first time I, I met Greg, Greg was, mm -hmm. was 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 at a callback at Nickelodeon, and the the first thing he says to me is like, "Hey, bro, I'm going in next. Watch my holsters for me." And then he took off his holsters. The 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 uh, was it the cell phone caddy? What, what was yeah. the, the real name for that invention? Because that was your thing. Holsters. Right? Yeah, yeah. I still just, make but, them. They're really you cool. You invented that. Holds your cell phone in your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was. Oh like, my god, I remember that. What? But what I don't remember me saying, guy? dude. Uh, hold my whole back. <laughs> it was like watch my host. The, the first time we met, that's not what that's not what happened. Maybe it like, did. This but guy's I, like, I was like, he's like Han Solo. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> he was the coolest guy. I, I wish I could say that. I doesn't. It doesn't come across. But uh, impressions again. It was every uh, every Filipino household comes equipped with a karaoke machine. Uh, so I was already <laughs> at a young age with a microphone and. You know, like me, just not mesmerized by my own voice, but kind of like curious. And I'm like, oh, that's what I sound like. This is this is my voice in a microphone and on a speaker. And every kid loves that. Every kid likes listening to that. 
but you never think mm-hmm. as a kid that this is even a possibility. You never think as a kid, like yesterday, I met one of the writers, uh, Terrence Nance, his niece. She was uh, 12 years old. This, this, uh, you know, very talented and very emotional, this, this, this young uh, black girl. And she got her glasses on and she was just myself, Candy Milo. We started talking to her in the character voices and she started crying. She started crying in the lobby mm-hmm. of this, the premiere of Space Jam. And she was, we were told she was an aspiring voice actress. And just listening to Candy give her these these world w- words of wisdom and inspiration, and and I did the same, and I was like, oh man, like I remember I was the, like at that age, you know, like that's the most impressionable and, and malleable you are. Like you you are still, you know, you're maturing, but you're like you have these dreams, you know, like you have these these visions or like these aspirations, and you know, I, I, I'm so glad that that happened yesterday. And it was just so uh, very emotional coming off of this movie of like being yourself and not, you know, listening to anyone, but, but your, yourself. And, and I feel like it just, it's, it's at that age for me at that, that, you know, 12 years old, I was like, I really like animation and I really want to do something with it. And I collected all the books in every every like how to draw you know every everything that i loved and that was like looney tunes mainly hanna barbera and then of course disney but uh you know that was it like it's just a passion for it i think it's a passion of making people laugh though you know i think we all have that funny bone and when we hold court and especially in in our sessions you know like a fair fairly odd parent session where I mean, oh my God, those sessions were like lightning. And then you have Tara Strong in the Hannibal Lecter booth, you know, the star of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and again, it's like, you know, everything was going at lightning speed. And you're just like, oh my God, I hope I can keep up. But uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, those were fun. As... All right, this is, this is, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no. It just, you know, it starts at, at when you're a kid and, and then you think you can do voices and impressions, but they don't really sound like who they are because you're just a kid. But you must have and, because you've been working on it a long time, right? You must have known yeah. you had it. Yeah. Let's call out some impressions um, and see who does the best impression between no, no, me no, and no, Bowser. No. Okay, okay, wait, but first, <laughs> this is what he's going to do. He's going to say I'm in it. I'm who in it. he is in Space Jam. And then he's okay. going to do that yeah. impression. And then you're going to do that impression because we want to honor the release of this film. It's so exciting. We're so happy for you, Bowser. You deserve all the success yeah. in the world. You're just such a high quality human. I just you adore you. So let's embarrass Greg Sipes. Tell us who you are and then do your voice. And then Greg will try to do it. But just side note, side note, Teen Titans, Teen Titans does make a guest appearance in the new movie that you have to go watch. To see they certainly do. Happens. They they are a, an amazing Easter egg, and the amount of fun and time that I've had with you guys, uh, just even being spliced in, and I have to thank <laughs> Lisa Schaefer and everyone at uh, Teen Titans Go. Every time I get to do something on that show, I feel like a rock star because that whole cast, uh, and I, you know, and I tell Sam Register, I'm like, that's that's like your baby. That's like that's your show, man. And and everyone mm-hmm. loves that show. That's that's like South Park for kids. You know, South Park, I would never let my son watch until he's 18. But you watch Teen Titans go, and it is such a it, – it, it hits so much pop culture stuff. Like, yeah. uh, I, you know, especially lately. I don't know what it is, but, like, there's been so much stuff that you see it online, and it's like – this is amazing. I can't believe they're doing it. Anyways. Yeah, we're, we uh, go there. I, that's for sure. I love that oh, analogy, yeah. though. We're, we're South Park for kids. It's the truth. It's it's South Park we, just, but but still edgy enough for adults to enjoy. Uh, it's for everybody. My name is Eric Bowza. My name is Eric Bowza. I'm on the Ship It Show with Tara Strong and Greg Sipes. And right. I am the voice behind all of your favorite Looney Tunes characters in the movie Space Jam A New Legacy, starring LeBron James, July 16th. And also streaming on HBO Max. Woohoo! So there's Daffy Duck. I also do Marvin the Martian Earth Creature. Isn't that lovely? I love the Ship It Show, but it blocks my view of Venus. Therefore, I shall have to blow it up. Ooh! Uh, and there's Elmer Fudd. Be very, very quiet. 
I'm hunting a wingman G. <laughs> hey. Uh, and there's fo a fog ho I say foghorn leg ho Pay attention, son. Greg Sipes. Like a dirt field between two corn fields. Nothing between the ears. That's a joke, son. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> And I, uh, I have the uh, honor uh, of voicing a uh, pe pe uh, pe pe uh, uh, porky pig. <laughs> the, 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 uh, that's not all, folks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been... Wow. Uh, did I get them all five, five characters? Yeah, that's five. Oh, um, my God. You're ridiculous. You're just ridiculous. Know, okay, Greg, <laughs> you, wanted, you wanted to try, so go ahead. <laughs> Now, granted, I just had a big uh, Sipe superfood salad, so there's there's salad kale in my tea, so I'm going to throw off my vocal inflections a bit. Okay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The first one, who is that? What character is that? I don't even know the name of the character. <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> By the way, I've, I'm have i not going to lie. No. Uh, I, I've been to Greg's house. I've had a superfood <laughs> salad, and it does gum up the works. Uh, he's made a no, salad so, for me for it. It's delicious. So you can Those imagine amino, those amino perfect. acids. Okay, Daffy that's all Duck. I got. Here's the so thing. No, no, Sam Daffy Duck. Right well, here's the thing. Let's 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 go through it. Daffy Duck. He has a lisp, not a uh, a uh, a lisp back here like Plucky did on Tiny Tunes. He has the frontal lisp, not a lateral lisp. Like I love out Eric Balza. Super. Oh, there, I'm there it is. Super. This I'm just gonna stick with super. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Super. Next character. Super. I'll tell you, uh, perfecting the Daffy Duck voice will improve your dating life them. for sure. Yes. <laughs> I got to uh, work okay. on that one. Here, it's almost like every Looney Tunes character has a speech impediment. So let's do uh, 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 Elmer Fudd. We did Elmer Fudd next. So yeah. Elmer Fudd has a very Elmer woe Fudd. Gwabbly. Yes. Well, yes. Gwabbly. A woe Gwabbly voice. And well, all of his voice. R's are, are W's. Yeah. <laughs> So I nailed Wag, that one. Next Wag one. Snipes. Okay. Wag uh, Snipes. Okay. Perfect. I got that one. That was pretty good. Not bad. For two. I gotta say. Uh, we'll give him that. Okay. We'll give him that one. We'll give him that one. Not the first one, but we'll give him that one. Okay. Foghorn Leghorn. He's the, the big sound? chicken or rooster. He's down south. And he caught, I say he kind of sounds like this, Greg. A down south. Boy, and oh he kind of sounds like this, Greg. Down south. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Three for three. <laughs> Boom. Keep going. I love it. Sounds like Kentucky Fried Chicken to me. Okay, Marvin the Martian. He, uh, he Mar has a yeah. Okay, he you has a. a I'm, Mar voice. I'm Marvin. I'm Marvin the Martian, and I'm on Space Jam. Uh, yes. Uh, Eric Bowser really does my voice, but Greg Sipes is uh, doing my voice right now, and it's really cool to be here with you all. I am Marvin the Martian. I it's love good, it. Right? It's like I cannot. You a I cannot. And four for like, four. If you have these. You know, it's like if you love these really characters, these really iconic characters, and you love them so much, but you you can't afford to buy the toy with the actual voice in it, so you go buy like some crappy one, you know, in some <laughs> some other crappy place. Don't it's you like, hate oh, it when yeah. they do that with their we'll characters? Put in there. Uh, well, there's, one so so there's one more I got to nail. There's one more I got to nail. Go ahead. What's Porky? Porky Pig. He's he's like definitely one of the most iconic. He's a stuttering you don't got a pig. Shot. He's very shy. You don't got a shot with this one. Give it to me. What does he sound like? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, the, uh, the, he, uh, that's all, folks. The, 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 that's all, folks. I'm Porky Not the Pig. That's all, folks. That's pretty good. Five no. for five. Watch out, Bowser. I'm coming for your job. <laughs> it's really so great that Bowser exists. Um, you're, but you also do bugs a lot, right? Uh, that's right, Doc. Ain't I a stinker? Yeah, and so uh, the, the thing about bugs is that nasally high-pitched... So Mel Blanc, uh, if we're going to talk yeah, about right, Mel Blanc... Not... Yeah, we have to talk. We have to do Mel Blanc's uh, natural speaking Mel voice. Blanc. You know, when yes, I came up with the voice yes. of Porky Pig, uh, yeah. I went out into uh, the, the farm and I wallowed around in the mud with these pigs. And, uh, and they uh, pigs, if pigs could talk, they'd talk with a grunt. Uh, and they be uh, that's all, folks. And that's how I came up with the voice of Porky Pig. So he has a very he used to, he I think he used to smoke cigarettes. He may have dr drank uh, a, a, a few back in the day during the day. Uh, so that kind of gives him that low pitch voice. And even when he did high pitch voices like Bugs Bunny, uh, they still had that grit, that grit in the bottom, but that high pitch nasally quality as well. And then you throw in that Brooklyn and Bronx, and it becomes Bugs Bunny. Here's wow. the funny thing, though. 
lose the Brooklyn and Bronx, lose Brooklyn and Bronx, and then you have this voice, and then you start talking like a baby, and all of a sudden it's Tweety Bird. Ooh, I taught I taught Pony Tad. So it's like, you know, you can kind of share voices just by those simple tweaks. I'm going to work on you're, it. Thank you for the vocal ridiculous, lessons. Ridiculous, ridiculous person. Yeah, mm-hmm, you keep working. It, 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 you are really so ridiculously talented. I mean, I, Thank I've you, been Tara. Thank in you. LA since 94. Yeah. Um, and I remember working on other versions with other actors and no one can do as many of them as you can. It is like Mel Blanc reincarnated. In, oh, yeah, you're well, you a legend. Uh, really legend. amazing. I, I think that's such a sweet thing to say. And again, I always have to go back to the the blueprint, you know, and especially if you've done iconic characters, you have to go back to the original DNA and you have to honor and pay respect. The Looney Tunes have been brought back into so many different versions and forms, whether they be a, a, a complete shout out to the 1940s or if they're playing basketball with LeBron James in 2021 what remains the same about the classic characters is the is who they are the integrity they never change and that's why they're so inviting it's like it's like talking to a friend that you haven't seen or heard from in like three years and you pick up the phone and you guys pick up where you left off that's what it is like to perform Mm -hmm. with these characters and it's like that's the tight wire rope that you walk with these characters because everyone knows Bugs Bunny's 81 years old. You know these characters like you know an old relative. So, yeah. you know, and again, you know what? That's from, true. And uh, it's not just that. I mean, can I just say that, like, there are many people that do impressions, and I've witnessed this in the studio where they sound yeah. enough like an iconic character, but they do not embody their essence, their soul. Um, right. They have to specifically decide how this character would say this, as opposed to someone like you who can embody that character completely, not just vocally sound like. You become these characters because of your acting ability and your ability to tap, like you say, into their DNA. I mean, I've heard people go, oh, I do an impression of so-and-so, but they, they can't act. And that might sustain for like a Kellogg's commercial, but a career sure. like yours, um, you really are extraordinary because you can become these characters. It's really, you're really like super amazing guy, Bowser. Really cool. Oh man! Well, this I, is again, my favorite. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite ship at show yet, by the way. Oh no he way! He says that every no show. No way! He says that every show. Oh good! Show. Don't look at him. He says it every show. <laughs> no, but every um, show is my that's favorite really, ship. That's at the show. halfway mark of the of the show is when he says that. It's like oh we all every know. show. <laughs> We have but we have masters are... come on every 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 show that we have every ship of show we have different masters come on master cosplayers master actors so again it's like it's it's hard to to like be like this is my favorite that's my favorite they're all my favorite and it's, it's obviously not hard because you say it every episode so it must be it's not the that truth hard to say here's the thing that. Greg and I are actually in the, booth, the same booth right now episodes? I don't know if you know this but uh... <laughs> <laughs> do you um... we are. <laughs> Um, I want to hear. Um, now, Tara, I want to hear some Tara, favorite. I'm... What? What? Oh. You asked me, do I remember any of the other Shippet shows? And of course I do, but I I, have, I immediately forget them after because I'm a nowist. I don't bog down my brain with <laughs> with information. I let it go. He I'm has so I can be. He has so much present. free hard drive space. He deletes yes. everything. It's I deleted it all. Amazing. What a lucky. Live what a lucky guy. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Okay. So, um, because we're at the Shippet Show and we love like highlighting con life and cosplayers and everything that goes into these cons, um, we'd love to hear a few of your favorite Comic Con stories if you have some. Oh my lord! Anytime I walk into a green room and see your faces, like if we're oh, not on the same panel so cool. and then we're like the, the the classic ships in the night, you know, walking in the underground of San Diego, like not in the the glorious outside, but like through the kitchen. Uh, I mean, seeing Stan Lee, you know, like five feet away from you, um, just being there, just being there. And, you know, it's I call Comic-Con, I call it the the company holiday party, uh, because that's where we all go in, in the middle of summer just to just hang loose uh we 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 get to eat on the company dime we get to sneak our friends in try to get as many passes for our friends 
And uh, it's a great way to say thanks to the fans. So if there's lots of fans out there watching anything that I've, you know, any anything that all three of us have been in in the last two years that we haven't had a chance to have that connection. Thank you for watching. And thank you for for always supporting us. And we do this for you guys. You know, we we make things, of course, to, you know, put our kids through college, uh, give wingman G like a, 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 a nice new collar or uh, something right. nice to eat. But, uh, you know, we do it for the kids and the fans because, you know, we were we grew up watching this stuff. And 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 there's a reason why we are still doing what we do. And it's because we love, you know touching people's lives in ways that uh you know we couldn't otherwise do like we couldn't do this like in a live action arena we couldn't do this any other way so yeah do you have a favorite uh, fan story or, at a con i mean just and i mean there, there was that one where we we're in toronto like uh getting to go back home to toronto and just these fans that like i th i think i'm like an obsessed collector i like to collect old vintage toys and stuff you know tara strong was so kind enough to gift me a very precious gift uh, a, a woody woodpecker clock from her father's collection your father was a collector too and uh, yeah. he had so much amazing memorabilia and uh, i remember being at at the fan expo in toronto and just some guy came up with this book of stamps that i'd never seen and it was one of those things where he wanted me to sign something for him and I'm like, well, I didn't, this wasn't specifically the, the version of bugs that I did, but he was like, yeah, but you're bugs now, you know, like, and he's like, I want, please like sign this for me. And I was like, okay, you know, like you're, you're here, you saved your Comic-Con dollars to be here. And I'm going to, I'm going to give this to you because this is what you want. And it was just very surreal for me. And, mm -hmm. uh. It, it will always be like Christmas for me every every morning, you know, just it's it's always going to feel new. And again, I don't know if you both have been back at cons in person yet, but, uh, you know, I don't know if you're 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 anxiously awaiting to do that or if you are, uh, you know, still doing them all virtually. But are you guys missing con convention life? Of course, it's so fun. And we're looking forward to doing the Ship It Show live at conventions all across the, the planet, too. That's going to be cool. The planet. Yeah. If you guys need me to dress party. up as anything, I will be there uh, <laughs> yeah. for the Ship It Show Live. I love that. I love that. That would be so cool. Um, so tell us about the premiere and let's put up some pictures of Vows at the premiere. And just for the fans to understand yeah. what it's like to be on the inside, to be the star of this kind of film and take over city streets and walk the carpet. Tell everyone about, I mean, it, you really are such an awesome story of dreams come true i think if you look on his latest instagram post you'll you'll see him at at the premiere um, so so once again you know even in a big movie like this we're still the the voiceover guys and uh, when you walk up unless you are lebron james or uh the height of a basketball player uh at these events they kind of just treat you like oh yeah sure you are buddy uh and then mm -hmm. uh you know then then you call up warner brothers uh pr and then they come to your rescue but uh you know, you, you, uh, I, I, I watched the film. This is now the second time I've seen it. I watched it at a screening and I, uh, uh, there, there, and it's very rare, um, at least in, in an arena like this, where again, it's like a live action mix with animation where you do have LeBron James and you do have, uh, you know, Don Cheadle and you have Zendaya as another voiceover actress. Uh, but myself and Jeff Bergman got a single title on screen credit in the opening credits of the movie. Uh, and I missed it the first time. I must have blinked because I missed it the first time. But mm. this time around, I was like, OK, where is it? Is it true? Is it a myth? And then there's your name in, in these big, bold wow. letters. And I know you guys you guys had really good ones on the Teen Titans Go movie with your characters dancing mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, I got to give a shout out to, to Hike. Uh, the uh, Armenian animator that worked hard on those scenes. He's one of my right. good buddies, and he he works on Teen Titans, uh, you know, the TV show and the movie. But uh, yeah, again, you know, guys, it's it's as as voiceover artists, it's like, oh, you know, it's always nice when they they shine a light on you. Um, 
Because yeah, I mean, you're not in the in the movie as yourself, but you embody these characters that, again, affect so many people's lives. And if it's something like Looney Tunes, you know, there are people that were like, I was watching, I was listening, because they're like the fans, you know, they're so hard to please, and uh, they know more oh, yeah. about these characters than we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, the red carpet premiere was great. You know, we got to walk the the purple carpet. And uh, there, there was a section of people, of course, across the street that are yelling your name and they're holding all this memorabilia out. And of course, I'm like, this will never happen to me again. So I ran out there and I signed as many <laughs> things as I could without catching, uh, you know, as Jess Harnell likes to call it, conneria. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, got to get that hand sanitizer. Uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. Again, it was a, a nice opportunity to say thanks to the people that are out there waiting. Uh, and that mm -hmm. was it. You know, we got to watch the movie and um, take some really nice pictures and get to catch up with people that uh, it really, That's again, fun. was an experience. Uh, when's the last time you guys sat in a movie theater with people? I mean, uh, like, too long. this, this way was before it. COVID. Yeah. Maybe even way, even way before COVID. So, I feel yeah. like mm -hmm. Space Jam is, you know, a Space Jam: A New Legacy is going to be, you know, it it if they had rushed it and it, you know had timed it with the Lakers winning the championship last year, it would have been out. But I feel like this is going to be like the motion picture event, definitely at least of the summer, if not the year of 2021, where it kind of revives and brings life back into the box office. Because, you know, and, and where can people see it in? Is it only in theaters or can people see it online, too? Um, right now, it's, uh, you know, it's going to premiere July 16th on Friday in theaters. And if you are a subscriber to HBO Max, it'll be there as well. So for 31 days uh, after the release in theaters. But uh, I just it put is it a, such I, a, so cool. Oh, no, it's, no, it's such a what? Oh, uh, it, it is such a, an epic film to see that I think you need to see it at least once on the big screen. Uh, the company ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, who, of course, uh, you know, is behind all the Star Wars movies and, you know, uh, a, a lot of the J.J. Abrams modern, modern classics, I like to call them. Uh, they did the special effects for this movie, and it is so mm. wild. It is so crazy to see uh, these classic looney tunes characters live and breathe in such a different way that's so fun you I and i are a, both I a... playing animated characters on an on-camera thing right now oh you and you and greg or are you and no you no me. you and me you yeah we me are? And you. Is, is that... yes, yes this minutes is animated on loki oh my it's god so let's talk about can we talk about that we talked about it for 30 seconds before this Again, mm -hmm. how long were you in the dark on NDAs on that? <laughs> oh, no, like, I had no idea what I was auditioning for um, when I read so the you, copy. You, didn't and, even, you, know, you didn't even know. No, and you know how it is. Well, normally as the voice actor, we'll get uh, drawings, we'll get a character description, maybe a show Bible, maybe a script, or at least a portion of the script. And the information was so vague. I called my agent. I'm like, is she AI? Is she sentient? She's like, I don't know. Can you find out? And I didn't know what it was for. It had a code name. It wasn't until I booked it that I knew it was Loki. And it wasn't until I was on the Zoom with Kate Heron, which I, when I really understood who this character was. And to be honest with you, it, it, I had no idea it was going to be this huge of a phenomenon. But the fans were in love with the show before it even aired and seemed to love Miss Minutes just from the trailer with her. And thank God, because you never know when there's a new character. You know, she's not part of any comic book series. And so to bring in an animated character onto a very big, successful on-camera franchise is a huge risk. And thankfully, mm -hmm. like, everybody loves her so much. It's been like this, I keep saying, it's like this present I get to keep opening that I never knew I ordered. It's like so fantastic. <laughs> it's so fun. When they, when they do it well, when they do it well, you know, it's really cool yeah. when they mix multimedia like that. I just asked on Twitter to the fans if they have any questions for you all. And there's a few of you all feel like answering them. Saki the Sock Puppet says, what makes Space Jam a new legacy, a very special sequel to the original movie? Oh, okay. The number one answer is that it is such a family movie. It is so full of heart. 
uh, not not to say the first one wasn't, but it was very you know centralized just around Michael Jordan being Michael Jordan, and of course there were events in his life that were happening, him retiring, you know the passing of his father that was mentioned in the film, and it was very deep. Uh, but this is such a delightful family movie about your you know you as a parent trying to enforce you know a life onto your kid that he or she may not want so it is very much of an encouraging movie and a message to kids out there to do you be who you are and and you know for you for the parents out there to support that uh with the kids it is it is such a big surprise and such a great takeaway that you're just not expecting and like I said, be sure to bring some Kleenex with you because you may or may not shed a tear in the theater. Uh, going back quickly to, to Miss Minutes on Loki, uh, like Tara Strong to me is like the Michael Jordan of voiceover because she has elevated being in voiceover to a level uh, that is like it, it, like how Mel Blanc like was the first on-screen credited voiceover voice characterizations by Mel Blanc. He fought really hard for voiceover artists and elevated the game for us all. But you look at something like Miss Minutes. If anyone else were to voice that character, no one would really care. But the fact that Tara is such an icon in voiceover and has worked so hard to elevate the game, like making it like it's true doing voices is like being a celebrity like there were articles <laughs> yeah. about you being this character you know what i mean and and that goes a lot yep. that's saying something so uh thanks for that uh you are the that's michael so cool. jordan of uh of voiceover Tara is. Uh, and this actually leads into our next mm -hmm. uh fan question from michael mccullock if tara would yes? be a, a looney tune who would she play and why Hmm. Well, I certainly cannot do any of those impressions. Um, who would I be? I, hmm, who would I be? Um, I haven't even seen, I haven't even seen Space Jam. I, it'd be fun to be Lola Bunny sometime. That'd be yeah. fun. Um, you know, it'd be fun to be, um, maybe Petunia. I could do some scenes with you. I don't know. Yes. Me and you could be like it, the little piggy lovers, have our own little ship it show in the in the mud. Um, you you know awesome. how we are. We we we. I was talking about this yesterday. I did a press junket for Loki. We get excited every time we book something. We are constantly auditioning. We're constantly auditioning for parts we already had. And like you said, Bowser, often Hollywood does not appreciate the voiceover actors as much as fans. And I. I'm pretty sure that Mel Blanc and our predecessors did not know how beloved they were like we do because of the internet, because people can Google their favorite stars and the fans are really what elevate us. So like huge thanks to the fans who, you know, say yeah. we love this actor playing this voice. And you're right. Um, they could have picked someone from the office or whatever, thinking that's a bigger celebrity. And then when you watch it blow up, like it has, it does tell Hollywood, Hey, pay attention to these people. They're, they're different, they're talented. And I always say like, not every voiceover person can do on camera, not every on camera person can do voiceover the same as not everyone can sing. I always say it's like asking a tap dancer if they do ballet and it's a very specific art form. And to be where any of us are today, you have to be really, really great. There's, there's just yeah. not a lot of room for new people. Everybody wants to do it and you gotta be top of your game, so. That makes sense. Sife, did you want to well, get one more question in? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah, one more question. Since the Ship It Show is all about our fans, we love you so much. It's nice to honor you and let you chime in here with some questions for the, the team here. Uh, Eric Bauza, uh, Lola Bunny or Jessica Rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we answered that question earlier, but uh, I got to say, you know, I I have worked in the booth with Cassie C, and she is definitely the OG Lola. Uh, and, and we worked together on new Looney Tunes, but, uh, you know, Zendaya really did, uh, bring a, 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 her own thing to the character, uh, of Lola. Uh, but if I could choose between Jessica and, and, you know, even like the new version of Lola, I mean, I'm going to go with Lola, you know, cause in this film, you know, we see her on the Amazon Island where Wonder Woman comes from and she is proving herself as a strong female warrior you know like they really 
uh, they really gave Lola a, a strong platform and, and a backbone to be on her own and to be such a strong female like, inspirational character for all the young ladies out there. And, and I, I, you know, I love that as much as I, Plus it's as much Zendaya. as I like it. How do you not have a crush yeah. on that? <laughs> as much as we like to uh, have a character that's easy on the eyes, it's also to have uh, a good, to have a lady by your side that, you know, can stand on her own two feet and have your back, but still be on her own. And there's nothing sexier than uh, a lady with uh, confidence and power. And that leads me to a thing that I want to talk about. This this will definitely, uh, you know, get me uh, out of the Emmy race. Oh. But, you know, my votes for Tress. Uh, I'm, in, I'm nominated for an Emmy this weekend uh, with Tress McNeil. And, you know, she's a living legend in her own right. I love her. She's so sweet. And she's so kind to me. Um, and to be nominated for a character, I think she should have won an Emmy for 25 years ago, Dot Warner in the in the new uh, Animaniacs. But furthermore, I am just tired of seeing one lady being represented in our voiceover field every year. It's usually about like four or five dudes and then one one lady. And I would love. Well, I don't know to why see... they don't have a separate category. There should be best well, female and best male. It makes no yeah. sense. I would, I would love to see a category for the ladies to uh, of animation and voiceover to honor them equally as they do us uh, males. But uh, that's just my humble opinion. Congratulations! I, you know, Congratulations, by the way, Bowser. That's very exciting. Um, uh, we have to wrap you. up soon and I want to make sure you have time to promote anything that you're working on or selling. You're quite the entrepreneur. If you want to tell anyone about any websites you have and where they can find you on all social media platforms, any charities you like, now's your time to just promote and, and have the space. Uh, well, uh, if you saw me on the red carpet, I was sporting a, a shirt that I had designed, uh, by, uh, my company in Toronto called retro kid. You can find us at retro kid. Uh, .ca or on Instagram, it's retrokid underscore to. Uh, Warner Brothers gave us the blessing to uh, create some of our own uh, sp uh, Space Jam, a new legacy apparel. And it doesn't stop there. There's going to be more coming out this year. So stay tuned. You can currently find me on an episode of The Ship It Show right now. We're filming it right now. Uh, but yeah. if you want to find me on social media, it's at Bauzilla, B A U Z I L L A. Uh, and of course, Space Jam comes out this week. Uh, you know, uh, again, just so lucky to be lucky to be alive and healthy and talking with my, my good friends, Tara and Greg. And I hope, uh, where did Bowzilla guys... come from? Uh, I think I'm just He's a stealing monster. It from, He's a uh, monster. Yeah. <laughs> you are. I'm stealing a monster, it from brother. Godzilla and the gorillas, uh, my favorite cartoon band, but, uh, but yeah, Bowzilla. I, I was like, what's my email going to be? It should be something fun. And every time I say You just to told the whole like, world your email address. Yeah. <laughs> hey, email me. I'm I'm not shy. <laughs> Give it to me. Oh, here's the thing. Is it at Yahoo or AOL? Who knows? It could be hot you know what? or hot. It could be hotmail, <laughs> H-O-T-M-A-L-E dot com. Uh, uh, who knows? Well, I'm pretty and, sure uh, you're going to have to change it helpful. now because- <laughs> People will guess, and you're gonna have Here's the thing. an influx of email. I I already have. Okay, you you, you want to see a, a a real turnoff? Uh, I know we're shipping here. Here here's the amount of e emails I have yet to answer on my phone. It's fifty four thousand. Uh, wow. Three hundred seventy two. Wow. So, so people can just be added to that pile. Bring it on, yeah, internet. Me, bring it on. 26,000. All right, 26, now, we have to be done. We want to thank Rooster Teeth for hosting us at RTX. I want to thank Bowza. You're just so damn brilliant. Thank you for giving us this time and sharing your gifts. You are definitely put on this world to share your gifts, and you do. You bring a lot of joy to people. I'm, I'm enchanted. You're just wonderful. And of course, thanks to Greg Sides, my incredibly handsome but kind of dumb co-host. I love you, Greg. You guys are just <laughs> awesome. I love you too. <laughs> and let me leave Let me leave everybody with this. Adopt, don't shop. Straight up. Go get a dog. Go get a cat. The greatest and gift maybe you could ever give yourself in your own universe. Friends. Yeah, yeah, well, well we're just the uh, innocent animals. I, I know we uh, taste good, but we're so uh, cute. And the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> Yay! I love us so much. Thank you, Bowser.